edge detection filters. Edge detection is probably one of the most known image processing technique. If not the most known, it's for sure widely used inside the computer science world. I can mention at least four or five different uses of this filter. For instance, I'll cite a few of them. Computer vision, image processing, obviously computer graphics, machine vision, and also image pattern recognition. This filter is used for image segmentation, image enhancement, and data extraction from a static image or texture. The purpose of this filter is to identify the edges or the curves of our model image where the image has intensity discontinuity, or in other words, brightness change sharply in the texture. But what are brightness discontinuity, you might ask? Well. Rapid changes in image brightness mean that we can be in one of the following situations. Change of depth at which a certain point of image lays, change of surface orientation, that means basically that we translate from one surface to another oriented in a different way, changes in the material properties, basically the material of the object is different from the one analyzed the step before, so we are facing a new surface, or variation in scene illumination. A fast variation of brightness corresponds to an edge, and the faster the variation is, the better the edge will be detected and depicted. By identifying the edges, we can now identify the object inside an image. I just want to say that in computer graphics, we are working with ideal images, not affected by noise, so the edge detection might result trivial. So, in a real case scenario where we work with images affected by the noise, the edge detection will not recognize all the edges, due to the fact that these filters are really sensitive to noise. More of that later. Just a small clarification. The noise will break our edge by smoothing the brightness variation on the edge, and in doing so, it will deny our filter to detect this edge. For this reason, with real images, we apply edge detection and after that we reconstruct all the broken edges with some edge reconstruction techniques that I will not discuss in this video. Just for instance, this technique is also called canny edge detection technique. But what are brightness discontinuities and how do we find them? We can visualize an image as a 3D matrix of discrete real values where these values indicate an intensity, also called brightness. We do want a 3D matrix due to the fact that we want to represent all the three colors, red, green and blue, or 4D if we also want the alpha channel to be represented. And on each of these channels, a value will mean that on this point in the space, the intensity of the color is 15, for instance. In order to find a discontinuity inside an image, we might use a handy mathematical tool, the differential operator. Oh, and just a small clarification here. You may represent an image with RGB, RGBA, or also other color spaces that I will not discuss here because that's not the purpose of this video, but just be aware that other color spaces are available like the one uh, HSL, HSI, and so on and so forth. By the way, back to our differential operator. The differential operator allows us to compute the end derivative of a function at a certain point. To make it simple, the derivative of the first order measures the growth or decrease that a function would have at a certain point in space. To do so, it simply shifts from a starting point to a close point and evaluate the difference between the starting point and the end point. I'll do a small digression here. The derivative of the first order is also useful when computed with respect to time, especially for games. In fact, the derivative of a position of a moving object with respect to time is the object's instant velocity, or in better words, it measures how quickly the position of the object changes when the time advances. So, 
after we understood that the derivative of the first order finds how rapidly an intensity changes specially, we can trivially implement the derivative as the difference between the value of the function in the next pixel and the value of the function in the previous pixel, also called finite central difference operator, that estimates the gradient on a discrete point. Now, we explain how to measure how quickly a function grows with the first derivative. It might be useful to understand also how we implement the filter itself. In order to do so, we will see three different filter kernels for three different filters that perform edge detection. The Roberts filter. It's the easier to explain and apply. It basically considers two 2x2 two two kernel matrices and applies them over each pixel of the image in convolution. That I explained in the previous video, but it basically is what I just said. You apply the kernel pixel by pixel by placing a matrix over a pixel. Not as hard as you may think. This filter is a bit different from the next two because it computes the derivative of the function over the diagonals instead of the horizontal and vertical pixels. By applying this operator, we roughly estimate the magnitude of the gradient at that point. And by applying, I mean to sum the weighted values of the intensity of the pixel, first with the gx matrix and then with the gy matrix that you are seeing right now and in the end compute the magnitude of the vector obtained with a well-known formula of Euclidean distance. Actually, this filter only considers the pixel after the current one, and this is not optimal because we are not considering the values before mine. So we are only considering the forward difference. In order to get a better filter, we may look for the central difference of a pixel. In the formula shown here, you might avoid the fractional part. It's useless to our purpose. The Sobol filter. It's the most popular filter because it frequently returns a satisfying result, but it's also computationally expensive. This filter considers two 3x3 three three kernel matrices and applies them over each pixel of the image in convolution. It simply computes the horizontal and vertical derivative with a central difference approximation technique. We assign more weight to the pixels that are the close neighbors of the central one, because we want the best possible gradient approximation over the central pixel. The application of this operator is the same as the Roberts filter. It now requires more computation, due to the fact that we are considering 9 values per each pixels instead of 4. The Prewitt filter. I won't go into much detail about this filter because it's basically a variation of the Sobel filter, except for the fact that this operator is not isotropic, which means that the response of the filter would be biased towards some type of edges. Instead, the Sobol filter is isotropic, so it just basically gives us the same response for the type of edges that are vertical, horizontal, and diagonal. Here, you can have a look at the implementation of these filters. I'll drop you also a repo where you can find the project and all the detail about the implementation. So, in the computer graphics context, we rather use the Roberts filter when possible, because the result is the same as the others, but the computational complexity is lower. Just to be really fair with you, with real images it's common to use other techniques such as canny edge detection that I cited before, which is a composition of Gaussian smoothing, Sobel edge detection and finally edge linking, but for our purpose this technique is useless and too redundant. We can compare the difference between these filters. As you can see here, the Roberts filter holds the comparison with the others. I will declare Roberts filter as the winner of today's challenge. <laughs> okay guys, that was a pretty long one. Hope you enjoyed it and up until next time, cheers. <laughs>